Something must be wrong with me, everyone. I woke up thinking about ocean content again. But not just any ocean content, mind you. The somewhat insignificant, yet worth an actual mention kind, if you know what I mean. Cause Driftwood here fits that bill perfectly, I think. As it has almost nothing going for it. All the while going into some pretty decent crafts, on top of having some unique spawning mechanics, actually. It's almost like it's meant for better things, and perhaps it will be one day. But for now, let's get to chopping, right? Well, not exactly, actually. For you see, one of the more unique aspects of Driftwood is that its sources are super specific. And what I mean is that pieces of Driftwood can only spawn and renew themselves through a quote-unquote hidden mechanic known as Flotsam. Expect to unknowingly witness Flotsam anywhere out there on the ocean every 30 to 180 seconds. And how it works is quite simple actually. Every 30 to 180 seconds, the game will randomly spawn a bolt fragment nearby us as we're sailing. It will spawn stuff called ocean debris, which has a distinct shadow to it, so keep an eye out for what you see here. Grass and twigs will also show up and both have a 20% chance to do so, although the first two kind of feel way more common at the end of the day, but finally, Flotsam may even appear as a driftwood piece as I said, and that is also 20% of the time. It's a whole bloody thing happening in the background as you sail about, and I wouldn't be surprised if you never even knew about it. But this is not the only way to get driftwood pieces, mind you. For you see, even if you don't get Flotsam to do it for you, them ocean debris spawns might actually result in driftwood pieces. They stick around for three to four days before disappearing. And if retrieved via a pinching winch and or just a simple sea fishing rod here, they might drop a driftwood piece. And we've also got some pretty decent chances at some various trinkets, lures, floats, and more. So make note there. But to continue, however, some other driftwood piece locations to check, especially during the early game, will be your shallow waters of the coastal oceans. And why is that? Because driftwood pieces themselves naturally generate within coastal oceans when a world begins. So this is by far your simplest get, if you know what I mean. That said, that still might not be your best bet, especially if you're wanting loads of the stuff if you want the biggest bang for your buck without any of the time consuming nonsense that comes with any of what we just discussed then your ultimate destination should be the rocky beach biome of the lunar island here that or the lunar archipelagos and why is that well, because these biomes are the only places in the entire game where driftwood itself is actually found. As yes, driftwood and driftwood pieces are two separate things. But there are three types of driftwood, but all three do not have any actual growth stages. So what you see is what you get. And the two small types will drop two driftwood pieces and one twig every time. While the tall driftwood will drop four pieces and two twigs instead. Plus, digging up a driftwood stump will also yield another piece, so make note there. But with Driftwood's set of rather unique spawning mechanics behind us, know that they are renewable through the first two sources we mentioned, obviously. So then, is bothering about Driftwood worth it at the end of the day? Well, a simple driftwood craft like the driftwood ore here already allows for us to start propelling our nautical circles far faster than any normal ore could do. So I'd say a couple driftwood pieces just for these are definitely worth it. 66% more worth it if you want specifics. Now I always thought that normal ores were better up until not too long ago if I'm honest. So don't be me. Make your own driftwood ore as soon as possible and see for yourself. I think you'll enjoy it. But driftwood is also essential for two out of the three crafts that the big bad blue bird, the Melbatross here, actually offers us once it meets its end. So that alone certainly gives the stuff some merit, I think. And one of them crafts is the highly sought after winged sail kit too. So there you go. Three driftwood, three rope, and some feathery canvas for a sail that alone is already faster than not just one normal sail, but two even. Yup, one winged sail is better than two normal masts. Don't forget it. Manage to get two of them and you'll be zooming across the water in no time. 
And while winged sails take longer to deploy, mind you, they can be dropped insanely quickly to help us avoid any potential collisions. So there's that. Mind, however, that the whole heave-ho mechanic also kind of speeds things up in deployment, so there's that too. But next comes one of our newest crafts released with Reap What You Sow not too long ago, and what do you know, it requires driftwood. The Water Fowl Can is another Melbatross drop, and while it will function all the same as any other bloody watering can in this game, it does offer four times the uses, so it is definitely worth the investment. Enjoy watering crops and stopping fires. But oddly, one of the more important driftwood crafts is that of the tackle receptacle here. Cheaply constructed via but one driftwood piece, one electrical doodad, and one bone shard, a tackle receptacle grants us access to the fishing tab and all of its lures and floats, including one that just so happens to be our next craft. Plus, any adverts obtained via bird killing go into a receptacle too to get even more. So make notes. But yes, the hardened slip bobber made from a single driftwood piece. Is it actually worth it? Well, considering how insignificant the range is on a cast with no float, along with how terribly inaccurate it is, I would think that investing but two driftwood for a receptacle and then a slip bobber is the least you can do, because suddenly, your range is gonna double, and you're gonna be way more accurate than before. Honestly, a slip bobber is the best bobber around until you get a bird float, so get you one. But to start wrapping up here today, allow me to plug my new store once again, all about turf, rocky beach turf included. With a terma firma tamper granting us access to the landscaping tab, a rock and a piece of driftwood is all that we need to create our very own beaches wherever we please. Now if you have no idea what I'm talking about, and or what this machine is, then you're gonna have to find out elsewhere for now. Because to truly end the day, here are two final notes. Driftwood pieces can be used individually to repair a boat by 6.25 health each if you're in desperate situations, which is very comparable to logs, mind you. And in a similar vein, both logs and driftwood share the exact same fuel value, so don't go thinking that one is more special than the other if you know what I mean. And unfortunately, that's kind of my whole concern about Driftwood, honestly. In fact, it's like it's almost really good about having cool mechanics and crafts to it, but it sort of falls short in the midst of it all, and it misses its potential, I think. Hmm, maybe one day we will be able to say differently, but for now, that's kind of it, huh? But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Use these trees from the sea wisely, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.